Hello and welcome. It's great to have you back on the channel. Today we are going to talk about eigenvalues and eigenvectors. In this video, you'll learn what is I, what is a vector, what is vector transformation, what are determinant, dot product and cross products, what does it all have to do with eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and why are eigenvectors so important in machine learning? We'll uh, use PCA, which is principal component analysis as an example and finally i'll talk about a little bit of algebra to give you an intuition about how the eigenvalues and eigenvectors are calculated finally moving on to coding this in python so what is a vector i'd like to imagine vector as an arrow in space that can be described by its length and the direction in which it's moving so the length would be the magnitude and you have the direction. So now if you look at a one dimensional space, uh, the figure on the left hand side, it could be an arrow on X axis. Moving on to two dimensional space, it could be an arrow that can not only move on along X axis, but now it can also move in the entire X, Y plane. In three dimensional space, the arrow would be able to move in X, Y, Z, three uh, in, in the three dimensional space. So those is, that is what I would think about vectors. Now, what is vector transformation? Imagine a vector that is stretched, that is one type of uh, transformation, which is scaling. In the figure here, we can see there is a vector that goes up to 2 on the x-axis. If it's stretched up to 4, that is scaling of the vector. And you can do this by multiplying the vector by a scalar. Similarly, if you rotate the vector, as in this case, we can see the vector is rotated to a new position, which is shown by the yellow arrow. That is vector rotation. Now we can combine rotation and scaling. So in this figure, we can see the vector was rotated as well as stretched to 0.44. So we have both rotation and scaling in this case. Finally, we have translation, which is just moving the vector at a different position. The direction and the length of the vector has not changed in this case, as you can see. Now, how do these vectors uh, work together to give us different measurable quantities? So determinant is one of those quantities. Determinant is a scalar value and that is it's a number which tells us how much we have deformed the uh, area uh, or span of vectors. So in this figure on the left hand side, we can see that there are two vectors which have a span or area shown by a gray shaded square in after vector trans after transformation it has changed into a slightly stretched shape and that is what we can know by determinant so if a determinant is zero in that case, as you can see in the figure on right, there's no area. So the value of that determinant will be zero if they are superimposed. However, if the value is positive, then we know that the area of the span of the vectors was scaled. Moreover, if the value is negative, then we can say that the vec the area of those uh, vectors area of span of those vectors was not only scaled but it was also flipped as shown in this figure below we can see the formula that is used to calculate a determinant if we had a matrix a b c d then the determinants shown here in the straight lines is calculated by a into d minus b into c that will give us a number moving on to dot products a dot product as we saw in the previous videos 
is a projection of one vector onto another vector. Now, if the dot product is zero, then as we see in this figure on the right, they are the vectors would have to be orthogonal. Therefore, we cannot project this vector y along y on x because it will be a point. Now, if the value is positive, then it informs us that those two vectors are likely moving in the same direction as we can see here. Both the orange and the green vectors are moving in similar directions. However, if the value is negative, then those two vectors are possibly moving in opposing directions as shown in this figure. Now for calculating dot products of two vectors a and b, uh, this is the formula shown at the bottom of the slide where ax is the x coordinate of a point uh, a at a and then y is the y coordinate. Similarly, b x and b y are the x y coordinates of point b. Cross product in is in contrast to dot product. So dot product talks about similarities between two vectors, whereas a cross product could be thought of as uh, something that tells us dissimilarities. So a cross product is a vector that is a result of uh, cross product between two vectors as shown in the figure on the right and the resultant vector is perpendicular to the plane of the two vectors for which it was calculated and below is the equation that tells how to calculate this resultant vector which is orthogonal to the uh, plane of those existing two vectors now we have uh, talked about vectors and the measures we can do with vectors but how does all this relate to eigenvalues and eigenvectors and why is it so important in machine learning well uh, let's look at this problem where we see city rainfall temperature and altitude previous video we just had two parameters now imagine a data set where we have thousand parameters and with thousand parameters it becomes a thousand dimensional problem and that's a big data set that not only requires more computational resources but there are other factors as well such as it could overfit the data uh, and that could not be good for your prediction model because if a model overfits it means that it's not generalized and therefore it may not uh, work well with a new data set and your predictions may be may go out of uh, the predictions may go wrong so uh, one of the ways to solve that problem is dimensionality reduction and pca principal component analysis is one way to do that so what we can do is out of thousand we can compress that down and find two parameters that could describe most of that data. So we don't have to worry about uh, the remaining uh, 900 and something parameters. So how, how do we do that? Well, in PCA, let's look at this scatter plot here where we have a couple of data points lying on XY plane. They are oriented about 45 degrees. And what PCA tries to do is tries to fit a vector along this data point such that the spread of the data maximum spread of the data is captured uh, on this particular plot we can see that if we project these data points in blue on this vector in orange then we can mark them as these dark dots on the vector and by spread I mean the distance of this very first dot on the bottom left to the top right the larger the spread the more essence of the data we have captured on contrast to this 
if there is a vector such as this one then here the spread of the data is small and therefore this is not a desirable situation we always want to find a vector which captures most of the variability in the data what variability tells us is it gives us information to describe that data so if we can capture that in parameters more the better so in principal component analysis we use principal components which are eigenvectors and eigenvectors and eigenvalues can be calculated by this formula which is a v is equal to lambda v where a is a square matrix which is your data set v and lambda is what we need to calculate so to calculate this this is the equations that we have to go through so basically we introduce an identity matrix and then reach this equation down below in orange where we are trying to find the determinant of this equation for example let's assume a matrix one two three four and we are trying to find the lambda so if we plug in the values and calculate this we reach a quadratic equation that's shown below here and once we solve that we get the values for lambda as shown here which is minus 0.37 and 5.37 from these we can then back substitute lambda to calculate the vector matrix v where we get these numbers so here this first column is principal component one and then we have the second column which would be the second component surprisingly it's very easy in python to calculate this values and it's just one line of code as you can see here uh, we first find the covariance matrix of the data and then uh, apply the eig function from linear algebra library to calculate both the eigenvalues and eigenvectors similarly there is another linear algebra library which is svd we can use to calculate the same eigenvalues and eigenvectors now let's get started in jupyter notebook i've already opened a new notebook and we are going to first import libraries say so import libraries and today you'll see new libraries that i'm importing it's okay if you do not understand them right now because i will be explaining them in future videos we need to import linear algebra library to calculate eigenvalues and then we are importing matplotlib dot pyplot uh, for plotting and then we import sklearn dot de decomposition import pca and this is for pca as you can see and then we import another library for pre-processing this is to center the data now let's go ahead and create a data set we'll create a matrix so np and there are different ways you can create this i'm creating 200 column 200 rows and two columns of random numbers and then np dot random dot random four and we'll reshape that to two by two matrix and that's the data now for plotting we type plt dot scatter x and we need all rows and the zeroth column and then all rows and the first column and this is how our data looks as you probably notice the data is not centered at zero so let's go ahead and do that first we can center the data so x is equal to pre-processing the scale and now if we plot the this again we can go ahead and copy this
now if you see this is centered at zero so if we plot the grid we can see that zero is right in the center okay so next let's move on to calculating the eigenvalues and eigenvectors first we'll use the pca method so let's do that and here uh, we calculate pca is equal to pca into n components now we can cal get more than two components but for now we'll just get two components dot fit x and that's done so now we can go ahead and print pca components and we can also go ahead and print pca eigenvalues which is the explained variances variance is just spread in data so here this first um, uh, array here the matrix this is the one that has the eigen vectors the first column of 0.7 and 0.7 those are the first principal principal component and then we have the second component here and these are the eigen values now let's calculate the eigenvalues and eigenvectors using the linear algebra library so we first need to calculate the covariance matrix and here i'm going to use x dot transpose so that we get the uh, input in correct format and we calculate v and w so here w is the lambda which is a eigen values and v is the eigen vectors now if you type w those are the eigen values and this is the eigen vectors now if you can notice the signs for the eigen values and eigen vectors are different uh, in these two matrices and the reason is uh, the way these are calculated by each of those um, algorithms as we'll see next when plotting the most important thing is that they should be covering the area of most spread and the signs are flipped uh, based on the computations that those algorithms are using now let's calculate the eigenvalues and eigenvectors using the SVD function. So here we use USVH is equal to NP dot linear algebra dot SVD, and here we again give the covariance matrix. If you type the view, yes. And here, as you can see, the values from this again are have different sign as compared to the other two methods. Uh, whereas the eigen values are the same in I think they are the same in all three cases. So now let's go ahead and um, plot this on a scatter plot to see if they cover the direction of most spread that we are talking. So I'm gonna go ahead and plot the data again, which is this one. So here we are going to use a function called quiver and quiver is the one that creates the arrows that we need. And it's completely okay if you do not understand how the plots work right now because uh, I'll be creating a separate video for plotting and visualization soon. So this is for you and then we are going to plot the V. So 0, 0 and then we have the V dot we're going to use v dot transpose just so that the arrows are facing in the correct direction and 
and finally we have the PCA data so we have the first one and then we have the second one there you go so this is the let's add alpha what alpha does is it uh, makes it a little transparent so he, here we can see that all the data points the direction of spread is defined by these arrows as we can see i would have expected them to be more along the corners but it seems to be tilted maybe that's the correct eigen vectors that kind of explain the spread of that data that we have on this plot that's it for this video i hope you learned what eigen values eigen vectors are and how they are relevant in machine learning please like share and subscribe it helps me stay motivated to create more videos for you guys thank you and see you all in the next video